This is Yamaha's new for 2021 Tracer 9 GT. I've had it for two weeks and when I ride it, I can't help imagining a conversation that I know didn't happen. There's a Yamaha designer telling his boss that he's gonna make a perfect bike for one particular bloke who lives in Lincolnshire. It needs to be sporty, but not a sports bike. And it needs to be toury, but not a touring bike. It should be fast, but with more focus on being quick off the line really, rather than having outrageous top speed. This rider also hates stopping for fuel, so if it could go a good way between refills, then that would be grand. You probably don't need to have a first name of Sherlock to work out that bloke's me, and I guess it doesn't need Columbo to figure out that Yamaha have made pretty much exactly the bike that I wanted them to make. It's all of those things I spoke about. In fact, it's bloody brilliant. It's an update on the original Tracer 900, which was launched in 2015 and then given a revamp in 2018. Another three years down the road, and this time it's had a hefty overhaul. Bear with me while I run through the changes as there are actually quite a few. The engine's bigger, it's up from 847cc to 890, giving a 7% increase in peak torque, and it reaches that peak earlier, now at 7,000 RPM, rather than the 8,500 of the old bike. Power's up from 113 brake to 117, and changes across the chassis mean it's 1.7 kilos lighter than the old bike. It's got a new frame, and the engine mountings on this one are specific to the Tracer rather than being shared with the MT-09 bike on which it's based. The engine's been repositioned in the frame too, which improves the balance and the handling. The swing arm is 60 millimeters longer, which helps with stability, but the overall wheelbase of the bike is the same as before, 1500 millimeters. For touring, the total payload is up by 7%, so you now have a 193 kilogram limit for you, your pillion, and your luggage. Technology goes through the roof too. There's a new IMU that's monitoring movement in six directions. The data from that informs a package of traction control, slide control, front wheel lift control, and brake control. The ride-by-wire throttle gives four riding modes. I think of them as aggressive, all-round, relaxed, and then there's a weedy wet mode. It's got cruise control, so long motorway slogs are easier, and Yamaha claim fuel economy is 9% better than the old bike at 54 miles per gallon and a 217 mile range from 18 litres. I've not exactly gone easy on this bike and I've seen 53 miles per gallon which would mean a 210 mile range which is more than enough between fill-ups for me. The exhaust on this bike is lighter than the old one, the wheels are lighter, the forks are shorter, the seat sits 15 millimetres lower but it can be moved back up those 15 millimetres if you like. The pegs can be dropped or raised by 15 millimetres for more comfort or more ground clearance and the bars can be moved forward by 9 millimetres and up by 4 millimetres. The screen is bigger than before and has more adjustment. It's got 50 millimeters of adjustment range. It's not as big as the one you see on this bike because this is the optional extra touring screen that costs another 143 quid. Behind that screen is one of the biggest talking points about this bike and that's a twin screen clock setup. And then there's a new radial front brake master cylinder which beefs up the sporty credentials and the new Bridgestone T32 tires. They're all new and they were developed with Bridgestone just for this bike. On top of all that stuff that you get on a normal Tracer, this GT model gets even more than that. The panniers come as standard, there's semi-active electronic suspension that modifies the settings to suit the roads you're riding, and then there's an up and down quick shifter included as well. You also get cornering headlights, which come on when you're leant over by seven degrees, and the more you lean, the brighter they get. Oh, and there are heated grips too on the GT model, just as you probably expect on a touring spec bike. So that little lot costs you an extra two grand. The base tracer is 10,202 pounds, and this GT is 12,202 pounds. Right, so those are the changes, but what's the bike actually like? As you might have gathered already, I think it's ace. It's got plenty of guts. It's not a warp speed monster like the KTM Super Duke 1290 GT or BMW's S1000XR, but it's more than quick enough in my opinion. There's loads of grunt and my 66 mile round trip to work and back, which is mostly on country roads, has been an absolute pleasure on this bike. The suspension works really well. I've had it in the stiffer, sportier of the two settings for the vast majority of the time, and it gives a really sporty attitude that I've really enjoyed riding. So like all the Tracers so far, this is still based on Yamaha's MT-09, and you can tell there's a sportier bike lurking underneath. The foot peg positioning for one gives it away as they're tucked back a little more than I'd expect from a touring bike, where the pegs would normally be more directly underneath my knees. But for me, I like that. I want a sporty bike with distance potential. I don't want a touring bike. Anyway, none of this stuff has been what people want to talk about. All anyone seems to want to know about on this bike is the clock setup, those two screens that sit either side of a central support. 
Personally, I've no real problem with them. The essential stuff is on the left screen, and then the right-hand screen shows the less important stuff. So speed, revs, gear, riding mode, traction control, and things like that, they're all on the left screen, as is the clock that tells you the time. And then on the right screen, you can have trip meters, a fuel gauge, there's temperature for the air, and also temperature for the engine, and you can keep an eye on your MPG. You can choose what's shown on that right screen, and if you want, you can have the same piece of info in all four corners. So if you want the air temperature four times, you could have that, but that'd be only if you're a bit weird. Some of the info on the left screen is shown a bit small, and it'd be cool if you could show it on the right screen instead, where it'd be a bit bigger and more easy to read. But really, these are small points, and I quickly got used to having that info on two separate screens. One thing I do think is missing, though, and that's a fuel range countdown. So this bike has a fuel gauge, so it knows how much fuel is in the tank and it knows my MPG, so it knows how quickly I'm burning through it. It doesn't take too much, surely, calculating to be able to use those two figures to work out how long it's gonna be before I run out of fuel. It'd be really nice if the bike told me that. I've known a few people in the past who've had tracers and they always seem to be messing around trying to get a screen that makes the ride quieter. There's something about tracer screens that just never seems to have worked. Unfortunately, I can't comment on the standard screen because this one came with the accessory touring screen, like I said earlier. But what I can say is that this one works really, really well for me. So if you buy a standard tracer and the standard screen turns out to be noisy, I'd say it's well worth trying the Yam touring screen like this one because it makes the ride really quiet. So those have been my two weeks with the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT, which have been so good that in all honesty, I don't want to give this bike back. If you're like me and you want a bike that's sporty, economical and can go a long way without refueling, then it looks like Yamaha made a bike for you as well, doesn't it? 